Hey everybody and welcome back to the deep dive. You know, today we're gonna to be looking at something that I think we've all thought about before, which is how scientific progress, you know, really happens. Yeah. Not that, um, you know, picture perfect textbook version, but like the messy, sometimes really surprising reality. Oh yeah, absolutely. And our guide for this whole exploration is this really thought provoking article called Embracing Imperfection in the Pursuit of Progress. It's really fascinating, isn't it? It kind of flips the script on how we usually think about science. You know, yeah. we're kind of almost conditioned to believe that it's all about precision and getting the right answers. Yeah, like it's a flawless machine, just churning out perfect knowledge. Exactly. But what this article is saying is that too much emphasis on being right all the time can actually hinder progress. So being wrong can sometimes be a good thing for science. Precisely. And the article kind of goes deep into how this all plays out, starting with what it calls the perils of dogma in science. Hmm. This idea of dogma is interesting. Can we dig into that a bit? What's the problem there? Well, think of it this way. When scientists get too attached to a particular theory, they might start to resist any new evidence that challenges their, like, worldview. Like getting stuck in a rut. Exactly. And history is full of examples, you know? Like Galileo's struggle with the Catholic Church over heliocentrism. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, Galileo's observations supported a sun-centered solar system. Right. But the church was really clinging to that Earth-centered view. Talk about being ahead of your time. Yeah. <laughs> Tried to convince people that the Earth revolves around the sun back then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. It's kind of ironic, though, right? Like, the, the institutions that are supposed to uphold knowledge sometimes become roadblocks to progress. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And it highlights how dogma can really limit the scope of what we even allow ourselves to inquire about. Hmm. And this isn't just some, like, relic of the past, you know. Mm -hmm. The article points to string theory as a more modern example. Oh, that's interesting. I've always been kind of curious about string theory and, like, how it hasn't been experimentally proven yet. Right. Does the article talk about that at all? It does. So string theory has kind of been dominating theoretical physics for decades. Right. But it's still waiting for that, you know, definitive experimental validation. Yeah. And the concern is that its dominance might be like overshadowing other potentially really valuable avenues of research. So one theory, even if it's not proven, can kind of crowd out other possibilities. Exactly. It's a good reminder that having lots of different viewpoints is super crucial for scientific progress. I see. So that pressure for one right answer kind of connects back to another challenge the article highlights, mm -hmm. which is the problem of premature rigor. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so what does that mean? Well, the academic landscape these days puts a ton of pressure on scientists to publish a lot and to secure funding. Right. And this often pushes them towards doing research that's, you know, quote unquote safe, the kind that will definitely get published. Oh, so instead of going after the big groundbreaking ideas? Yeah, they stick with the smaller incremental advancements, that kind of thing. Precisely. Mm. Like imagine if Einstein had been forced to abandon his early work on general relativity just because it wasn't perfectly formed from the start. Wow, yeah. His initial equations were like, messy and incomplete right but they ended up leading to you know a completely revolutionary theory yeah we might be decades behind in our understanding of the universe if he'd given up because of pressure yeah you know wow yeah that's a really good point it makes you think about all the amazing ideas that might be getting you know stifled out there so creating an environment that's more open and accepting in science that seems really critical Absolutely. One that allows for, you know, more risk taking and those like unconventional out of the box ideas. No, this is where it gets really interesting. OK. The article actually argues that being wrong can sometimes be um, yeah. really useful for science. I know. Right. It sounds kind of paradoxical. <laughs> yeah. But think about it. Even if a theory turns out to be incorrect, the process of trying to prove or disprove it can often lead to valuable insights. The phlogiston theory, right. Exactly. Totally wrong about fire, but it helped us discover oxygen. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. It makes you wonder how many wrong ideas are out there right now, just waiting to, you know, sparks some scientific revolution. It's like they shake things up, forcing scientists to look at things differently. Exactly. They challenge the existing assumptions and often, like, inspire new experimental approaches mm -hmm. like another good example is Bohr's model of the atom yeah okay it wasn't entirely accurate especially in the way it envisioned 
electrons, you know, orbiting the nucleus like planets. Right. But it was still super important for getting us to quantum mechanics. Yeah, it was a stepping stone. Exactly. It paved the way for a much more uh, nuanced understanding of how atoms work. So even being wrong can push science forward in unexpected ways. So how do we actually create an environment like that? One where, you know, productive imperfection is actually encouraged. The article mentions some concrete steps, especially for the people um, yeah. who control the funding. Oh, absolutely. So when it comes to funding, the article is a big advocate for putting more resources towards what it calls higher risk, high reward research. Makes sense. It suggests that, um, you know, funding bodies should come up with new evaluation criteria, criteria that value innovative thinking even if the applications aren't super clear right away. Because sometimes those groundbreaking discoveries come from the research that seems the most out there at first. Yeah, exactly. It's all about embracing the unknown and the potential for, you know, those unexpected breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about funding either. Okay. The article also really stresses the importance of diversity in science. You know, I once worked on this project and we had a linguist on the team and their perspective completely changed how we approached a really technical problem. Wow. It was amazing to see. Yeah, that's a perfect example. The article argues that we should really encourage collaboration mm -hmm. between different disciplines, you know, like valuing different backgrounds and viewpoints within research teams. That just makes sense, right? I mean, more experiences and viewpoints should lead to more creative solutions. Absolutely. It's not just about, like, fairness or anything. Yeah. It's about making science better. Yeah, you know? exactly. So a more open and diverse environment is crucial for, uh, for fostering creativity and ultimately, you know, scientific progress. It's kind of funny, this whole idea of embracing imperfection. Yeah. It's not just, you know, limited to science. Oh, really? Yeah. I think it's relevant to a lot of areas of life, actually. Oh, I like where you're going with this. Yeah. So if being wrong can help us move closer to, like, the truth in science, right? could that also apply to other things? Absolutely. Like, take art, for example. Okay. Artists are always, like, experimenting, pushing boundaries. Yeah. And they even, like, embrace those little accidents that happen, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Those things can send them in whole new directions. It's true. They're not afraid to mess up because sometimes those mistakes turn into something, you know, yeah. beautiful or unexpected. Exactly. Imagine if a painter were too scared to use the wrong color on a canvas, you know, uh -huh. we'd miss out on so much amazing art. Yeah. And I think the same goes for like entrepreneurship. Hmm. The best entrepreneurs are often the ones who take risks, try things that might not work out and learn from when they fail. It's like having that growth mindset, right? Seeing those challenges as opportunities to get better. Exactly. It's about changing how we think about being wrong. Yeah. Instead of seeing it as a bad thing, we see it as a chance to learn. Right, right. And that's what this article is really getting at, you know? Mm -hmm. That change in how we view being wrong. Yeah. It's so important for science to move forward. So we need a culture that's more open to new ideas, more okay with risk, less afraid of making mistakes, Exactly. It's not about celebrating mistakes, but it is about creating a space where it's fine to make them, you know, right. learn from them, use them to get to something better. Yeah, that makes sense. And that idea that, you know, it goes way beyond just science. Yeah, I can see that. Something we can all think about no matter what we're into or what we're trying to achieve. You know, one thing that really got me thinking was how the article talked about incorrect theories. Yeah. Like how even those can help us understand things better. Right. It makes you wonder about like the whole nature of truth and discovery. Yeah, it's pretty wild, right? If learning from being wrong can lead to new insights, mm. what does that even say about absolute truth, you know? It's a tricky question for sure. It is. Like, is truth something that's always changing? Are we getting closer to it but never actually reaching it? Those are some big questions. They are. I mean, yeah. philosophers and scientists have been thinking about that stuff for ages. I guess so. It's not an easy answer. Yeah, I guess not. But so what does all this mean for us? Like, how should we try to learn and understand the world around us? Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think it means we got to be a bit more humble about knowledge, you know? Okay. We should be open to new ideas, even if they go against what we already believe. Hmm. We got to be willing to question what we think we know. Yeah. And consider different points of view. It's like staying curious and open to learning more, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all about that curiosity, that sense of wonder, that willingness to keep growing. And that's really powerful, especially in a world that often seems to want, like, 
definite answers and certainty. Yeah, total. You know, this whole deep dive has really made me think about how I learn and solve problems in my own life. That's great. And I think it's really cool how science is always about discovering new stuff. Right. You know, refining what we know and even changing our theories sometimes. It's true. It's like they say, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's what makes it so exciting. There's always more to find out, more to learn, more to discover. That feeling of endless possibility, you know? Yeah. That's something we can all tap into. I agree. So if even wrong theories can move science forward, what does that really tell us about truth and discovery? That's a deep one. It is, right. And I think it's something we each have to like wrestle with on our own. There's no one answer, is there? Nope, not really. Hmm. But, you know, trying to find that answer, that's where the real learning happens. Yeah. That's what makes discovering new things so cool. Exactly. So as we're wrapping up this deep dive, yeah. I want to leave you with this thought. So if even wrong theories can help us make progress in science, yeah. does that mean what we think is true right now, like today, might actually be seen as wrong or incomplete in the future. It's totally possible, you know? It's kind of like what we see as the finish line today Yeah, might just be a checkpoint on a much longer road. I like that. So it's not just about, you know, finding the right answers, but about always trying to understand things better as we learn more. Exactly. And that goes for everything, not just science. Oh, interesting. What we believe about ourselves, about the world, even our values. Yeah. Those things can change as we have new experiences and see things from different perspectives. So we got to be open to changing our minds, to like updating what we know. Totally. It's about realizing that knowledge isn't like a destination. Hmm. It's a journey. And mm -hmm. sometimes the best discoveries come from questioning what we think we know. You know? Right, right. And being okay with not knowing everything. It's kind of freeing, actually. Yeah. It takes the pressure off always having to be right. Totally. It lets us be more curious and open to new possibilities. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's all about that sense of wonder and that um, spirit of exploration. This has been such a cool deep dive. Glad you liked it. It's really changed how I think about science and just learning in general. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's a good reminder that progress doesn't always follow a straight line. Yeah. Sometimes the most unexpected detours lead to the biggest breakthroughs. I love that. So to all our listeners, remember, embrace the imperfections, stay curious, and never stop exploring. Yeah. Who knows what you'll find? Maybe you'll make a mistake that turns out to be your biggest win. Exactly. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. It was great having you. We'll catch you next time.